Okay, we are on 132A, right? A uh, number of lines down from the top. About six lines down from the top. We finished up with a long discussion in the Gemara as to how Rabbi Eliezer could present the view that the preparations for other mitzvot were also doche Shabbat. And therefore, they would be similar to uh, the preparations for Mila. And eventually, the Gemara came to the conclusion that that's certainly not the attitude of the rabbis, number one. And number two, uh, it seemed unique with the view of Rabbi Eliezer, and even only to, regarding Mila. Okay, so we now pick up a new piece on the Gemara, okay, as we start. Adkan lo plige rabbanan alei ela b'machshire mila. So it says up to this point, the rabbis did not disagree with him, namely Rabbi Eliezer, except in regards to preparations for mila. Aval mila gufa. But uh, Mila itself, Divrei HaKol Doche Shabbat. Everybody seems to be in agreement that the act of Mila, okay, is something that does supersede Shabbat. Amar Ula says, Ula Halacha. Ula says the reason that this is the case he's suggesting is that it's a Halacha Lamosha Misina. And likewise, Rabbi Yitzchak also says it is a halacha l'moshim Sinai. However, Gemara raises the question, May TV, if I challenge this from a brighter, me nayim l'pikuach nefesh shedochet ha-shabbat. How do we know that pikuach nefesh is something that does supersede Shabbat. Okay. Rabbi Eli Elazar ben Azariah Omer, ma mila shehi echat me'evarav shel adam dochet ha-Shabbat. <laughs> He's going to make a kal v'chomer here. <laughs> Rabbi Elazar ben Azariah. Whereas mila is such that one of the limbs of a person is such that it supersedes Shabbat. Kal v'chomer, the pikuach nefesh shedochet ha-Shabbat. All the more so that saving, in a sense, the entire body or the entire soul, the whole person, should be such that it supersedes Shabbat. Fei salka da'atach halacha, and if you're of the view that it is a halacha l'moshim Sinai, kal v'chomer mi halacha. Mi ate, asks the Gemara. And if you do think it is, uh, uh, then, uh, then does one need to even argue a kavachomer from a halacha lemoshe misinai? Vahatanya, says the Gemara. But aren't we taught elsewhere in another Brighton? Amarlo Rabbi Elazar ben Azaria. Rabbi Elazar ben Azaria once said the following Akiva, etzem kisora metame halacha. That the fact that the measurement of a barley corn is a, from, uh, of a bone from a corpse is enough to pre uh, uh, pre you know, cause, let's say, Tuma, that's a halacha l'moshe misinai. Or ve'id adam kal v'chomer. And if that's the case, then a revis log, so to speak, of blood, all the more so. Ve'anin kal v'chomer me halacha. Welcome, Mandy. But we say that we do not determine, we don't argue a kal v'chomer Based on a halacha l'moshe misinai. Ela amar Rabbi Elazar. Does Rabbi Elazar 
I'm going to learn it from a, a different uh, way, not a Kalvachoma. Ella, he says, Atya out, out. He says, I'm going to learn it from a Gezer Shava. Okay. In other words, the word out is a sign in two psuki, right? Out, of course, referring to circumcision, and out also referring to Shabbat. Okay. Out Heliola. Ela me'ata, but from here, he says, tefillin, dechtiv bahem ba'od. So the Gemara challenges and says, if that's the case, if you're going to learn, use that gezerah shava as your means to learn that mila supersedes Shabbat, what about the example of tefillin? Because that also is going to contain the word Shabbat, out in it in regards to a pasuk. Tefillin dechtiv bahen out. Liyidche Shabbat. Shouldn't that also then supersede Shabbat? So the an attempt to answer. Ela atya brit brit. Okay, so maybe we'll make a different gezerah Shabbat, Rabbi Elazar could argue. And I'll base it on the term brit, okay? Namely, I have brit in regards to one pasuk, it's okay, circumcision, and I have brit in regards also to Shabbat, okay? So the Gemara answers again, gadol, okay, where it comes, it refers to an adult, dechtiv be brit liyed Shabbat, okay, fine. It says when it comes to an adult, would it also therefore be such that it would supersede the Shabbat, okay? Because there it's not written, read, okay? Ela atya dorot dorot. So try another Gezer How about we try the word generations from different psuki, okay? And we could argue there too, that in that case, uh, it was Shabbat to observe throughout generations and circumcision every male throughout your generations. Okay? So the Gemara challenges that at Kazera Shava. Tzitzit, what about Tzitzit? Dichtiv be dorot, lidche Shabbat. If that's the case with regards to Tzitzit, it also has the word generations in it. Therefore, should it also mean that it should supersede Shabbat? Hela Amar Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak, right? Damin Ot Brit Vidorot. Okay, we make a multiple Gezer Shava using these three words: Ot Brit and Dorot, sign, covenant, and generations. May Ot Brit Vidorot. Okay with another psukim that also has those three words, right? La'afuke hanach, to exclude these others, namely tefillin and tzitzit. Dechad chadhu dechtiv bahem, because it's only the one pasuk between Shabbat and Mila that contains all three of those words, okay? Let's go on now. A new piece in the Gemara. Rabbi Yochanan Amar. Amar Kra. The verse says, Bayom, on that day. Bayom of Filu Shabbat. Okay? He's, excuse me, going to argue. It says on the eighth day in the day implies a Shabbat as, uh, okay? as well. Now, this, remember, was one of the things that Rabbi Eliezer used for his support of the idea that uh, the preparations for Mila also were Doche Shabbat. Okay? Bayom afilu b'Shabbat. On that day, namely including Shabbat. Amarle reish lakish Rabbi Yochanan. So Reish Lakish questions and asks, Elameata Nichusre Kapara. Okay, 
What about, he said, another example? Those individuals like a Zav or a, a leper that's been cured, but they are still are not able to be fully Tahor because they're waiting for some additional act, either till nightfall or the next day to bring their, uh, their, their uh, uh, korban. Dechtiv baho bayom because there too it's written regard to them by Yom on that day. Okay? Therefore, hachanami did the Hu Shabbat. So here in these cases, what that also seemed to imply that uh, they can, uh, that that's going to supersede the Shabbat. Hahum bayale bayom below balayla. No, that we need because for the context of the situation, it tells us it has to be done day and not at night. Hi, now me me bayale beyond below balayla. So here too, they also need to do it to act in day and not at night. Hahu me ben shmonat yamim nafka. And therefore we see that this comes that basis of the mila having to be done it by day is because we derive it from the fact that the verse said eight days, okay? And therefore, that's basically the command uh, there. Okay, let's go on. Hi, Nami, may be on Sivato Nafka. But I could argue, says the Gemara, that uh, here too, okay, he was commanded to do it on that day. Afal gav denafka mi bayom tzvato itztericha. Okay, even though that was the case, he says, right, it comes out from the fact that it says on that day he was commanded, the Pasuk says it, and we need that. Okay? Say, what? Salgada adcha amina, because it's possible, I might have thought to say, Oil v'chas rachmana alei, okay, that since the Kaddish Baruch Hu had the mercy on him, la'atuye b'dalut, that maybe for the Zav or the leper, okay, that uh, he could bring his, uh, permit him to bring a, a lesser sacrifice when he's poor, okay? Belayla nami lite. If I do, if I say that, then maybe I would also permit him to bring the sacrifice at night. Okay? Kamash Malam comes to teach us that that's not the case. Matkifa Ravina, and Ravina then challenged it, and he said to him as follows, Elameata, but from here then, Yehezar Kasher Bahem. If that's the case, he says, Right? Viehe onen kasher bahem. Okay, if that's the case, then a zar and an onen, okay, would be eligible, okay, to bring uh, sacrifices at night because of their perhaps poor status, right? Ha 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 dre kra. But the pasuk, however, uh, comes back and uh, basically then is going to uh, tell us that that's uh, not the case. <clears throat> it wasn't uh, this leniency of which we saw in terms of bringing a lesser sacrifice when one was poor doesn't apply, okay, to other situations. Okay, all right, going now. Rav Acha. Says Rab Acha Bar Yaakov Amar. Excuse me. Okay. He says Amar Kra. The pasuk says Shmini on the eighth, right? The eighth day, right? Shmini Afilu B'Shabbat. That if it's the eighth, it must also include Shabbat. Hai Shmini Mi Bayale 
Lemaute Shvi'i. So the Kamara asks, maybe it's possible that the Torah text specifically states the eighth day in order to eliminate it being done on the seventh day. Shvi'i miben shmonat yamim nafka. Okay, and we could derive that idea from the fact that it says eight days old. Va'akati mi ba'ile, and it's still required, all right? Chad one, the ma'ute shvi'i, one reason could be to exclude it being done on the seventh day. V'chad le ma'ute chi'i, and one, another reason could be to exclude it being done on the ninth day. Okay. And what happens? The e mechad, if it was in one case, right? Hava amina shvi'i hu delo matezmane. I could therefore argue and say uh, the reason that it's not on the seventh day because it hasn't reached the time, the appropriate time for the circumcision to place. Okay, and that's why the Pasuk has to tell me that it's got to be the eighth day. Right? Aval mishmini ve'elech zmanehu. But therefore, I could argue that from eighth day on, it's an appropriate time to have the circumcision. But rather, it must be clear that it is explained the way Rabbi Yochanan said. Okay, and that, of course, was the fact that uh, right, Rabbi Yochanan indicated it had to be also on Shabbat. Okay, not by night, things like that. Okay, Tanya. Kivate the Rabbi Yochanan, and further the Gemara tells us, it was also taught in accordance with Rabbi Yochanan to clarify what we just said, right? Udalo Karav Achabar Yaakov, and not according to the view of Rabbi Yochanan ben Yaakov, Rabbi Achabar Yaakov. Why? Because the Pasuk says, Shmini Imo Afilu B'Shabbat where Rabbi Yochanan said on the eighth day, he shall be circumcised, right? even the Shabbat. So if that's the case, asks the Gemara, how do I substantiate the Pasuk that says, okay? that those who profane the Shabbat will be put to death, right? What uh, do I do with that? Pasuk and that law, right? Bashar melachot chutz mimila. We say that that deals with other kinds of labors, excluding circumcision. O e no ella afilu mila, or do we say it also is going to be to include mila as well? Uma ani mekayim shmini imo chutz mi shabbat, and how then do I maintain? the fact that one could do it on the eighth day with, by excluding the Shabbat. Talmud Lomar, Bayom, Afilu B'Shabbat. That's why the text therefore teaches us when it says it has to be done on that day, it implies including Shabbat. Amar Rava. And so Rava now says the following. Okay. Hi, Tana. This particular Tana, okay? Me'ikara ma'ikanechale. Originally, okay, what was his uh, uh, intent? What was his uh, topic? What was his content? What was good for him? Ulevasov ma'ikakashale. And ultimately, what was problematic for him? Hachi Kama, this is what he said. Shmini imol afilu b'Shabbat. He argued that on the eighth day, 
one needed to perform the circumcision even on Shabbat. Uma'ani mekayen. And how then do I maintain the, and understand the pasuk mechalaleha motimat, that the one who desecrates it will be put to death? Beshar melachot chutz mimila. In regards to other kinds of labors other than circumcision. Aval mila dechia. And mila, however, supersedes Shabbat. My Tama, what's the reasoning? Okay. Kalva Khomer, it's a a fortiori reasoning. Who? Umat Sarat Shadokhet Avoda. Okay. As we can see the following example, says the Gemara. We have a situation that if a Kohen comes down with Sarat, he's not able to perform his priestly function, his uh, sacrificial work, right? Let's go over to the next Amun. V'avodah doche et ha-shabbat. And the priestly function, the avoda, supersedes the Shabbat. Okay. Mila doche ota. Circumcision then would supersede it. Shabbat then the Sabbath, which is superseded by the sacrificial service, is it not logical then that circumcision should therefore supersede Shabbat? So the question the Gemara asks here then, and why does he use the language of Oh, hey, no. <laughs> or, in other words, why does he use that kind of approach to Kama? Hadar Ama. He comes back then and teaches as follows. Isn't the situation of leprosy, excuse me, more stringent? Dilma, okay, why? Because a person can't do the uh, a voter in that situation. Dilma Shabbat Kamura. Perhaps Shabbat is more stringent. Shekain Yesh Ba Onshin Bahazarot Habe. Because Shabbat has multiple penalties, right? And many law warnings, laws, okay? Onami, or perhaps. Umimai Mishum de Chamira Tsarati. Perhaps it's a situation where leprosy is more stringent. Dilma mishum gavrahu delochazi. Because in that case, the person is not fit. He's not suitable to do his avoda. Uma anima kayem shmini yimo. And how then do I maintain and establish that on the eighth day he should be circumcised? Chutz mi Shabbat, outside of Shabbat, Talmud Lomar, Bayom, Elba Shabbat. That's why the text, <coughs> excuse me, then teaches on that day, okay, or in that day, teaching it has to be on Shabbat. Okay. All right. We're continuing now with a new bright day. Since we brought up this issue of leprosy and uh, the proper time, okay, the Gemara gets into this side discussion. Tanu Rabbanan, a new bright that teaches as follows. Mila dochet hatzara'at, that circumcision is going to supersede leprosy, or whatever, let's try, you will use that translation for the moment. Tzarat. Bein bismana, bein shalo bismana. Whether the circumcision is performed at its proper time or not at its appropriate time. Yom tov eno doche ele bismana bilvad. But 
in terms of the festival, it's only superseded when it's at proper time. It was on the eighth day. How do we know this? Because the rabbis teach in a brighter. Yimo basar arlato. Right? The flesh of the foreskin should be circumcised. Va'afalpi sheyesham beheret yikotz. And even though there is beheret, a form of leprosy, right? It must be cut off. Uma'ami mekayim. And how then do I maintain the fact that elsewhere there is a prohibition in the Torah that says, he shomer benega hatzarat, that one is prohibited from uh, hiding or removing, if you will, uh, any sign of leprosy. Okay? Bishar mekomot chutz mimila. This refers to other places in the body with the exception of the location for circumcision. O eno ela afilu mila, or perhaps it only ref also refers to the location of the body where circumcision takes place. Uma animakaye, and how then do I maintain, establish, imol basar or latau, okay, that he should have the foreskin cut off, at a time then when he doesn't have any baharat, any circumcision. Talmud Lomar, here the text teaches basar, where it says flesh. Afalpi, sham baharat, even though it may have some leprosy. Amar Rabba. And so Rabba says now, Hi, Tana, this particular Tana, Meikara, Mainechale. Again, so what was originally, what was good for him? What was he comfortable with? And ultimately, what was problematic for him? Hachikama. Okay. This is what that Tana said. We have a Pasuk, <coughs> excuse me, that says, that one is to remove, right? Circumcise the flesh and the foreskin. And even though there may be a form of leprosy there. And how then do I deal with another pasuk and maintain that that says, He shamer benega hatsarat to guard, protect, take heed for the plague of leprosy. Again, you're not permitted to hide it, remove it. Bishar mikomot chutz mimila. And the answer would be in those other body locations, with the exception of the place for circumcision. Aval mila dochet hatzarat. And therefore, lep uh, circumcision would supersede the leprosy. My Tama, what's the reasoning? The Acha Mikal Vachomer, because I can learn it based on, it comes from a Kal Vachomer <coughs> argument. Namely, Ma Shabbat Chamura Mila. Okay, and whereas we say the following. Whereas, whereas when regards to Shabbat, Chamura Mila, that Mila is uh, more, if you want to say stringent, Doche Ota, language here, <coughs> a little complicated, that Mila is more stringent in a sense than Shabbat, and that it supersedes it. Sara'at lo kol shakin, then leprosy, isn't that wouldn't be therefore be more or less the same case that Mila would be Dochet Sarat? If that's the case, then the Gemara asks, Umai o Eno, why then did the Tana then teach it in that manner? The Ka'amar Hadar Ka'amar. 
Okay, because when he said it, okay, <clears throat> that uh, he went back and phrased it another way. Mimai de Shabbat Chamira. On what basis is it <coughs> that Shabbat is more stringent? Dilma Tzarat Chamira. Maybe leprosy is also more stringent, implying then Mila. Shekein doche et ha'avoda. Why? Because it supersedes any work. Sacrificial service. Ba'avoda doche et ha'shabbat. And the sacrificial service supersedes Shabbat. Talmud Loma basar. Therefore the text tells us flesh ba'afalpi sheyesham baheret even though it may have some form of leprosy. Now, Gemara here is going to uh, review this whole item again and phrase it a little differently. Lishna Achrina. We have this following in a somewhat different language. The following. Mila dochet hatsarat ma'itama that circumcision supersedes leprosy. What's the reason? Da'ate ase v'dache lo ta'ase. Because we have a positive commandment and it comes to supersede a negative commandment. Umai o eno, the ka'amar. So what is this o eno that the Tana used in his language? Hadar ka'amar. He went back then and said as follows. Ema, I might say, da amrinan da'ate ase v'dachai et lo ta'ase. That we might say that there comes a positive command and it supersedes a negative command. Lo ta'ase greida. That's a situation where there is only a, a negative command by itself, alone. Hi, I say, velo ta'asehum. But in this case, with Mila, okay, we have the example of both a positive command and a negative command. Uma'ani mekayem imol basar orlato bisman she'en ba baharet. And therefore, I can maintain that I must uh, circumcise the flesh of the foreskin at the appropriate time when there is no leprosy. Talmud Lomar, the Pamai text, therefore teaches basar, <coughs> flesh, va'afalpi sheyesham baheret, even though there may be uh, leprosy there. Okay. Now, we come to a new uh, side discussion in the Gemara. Tenach Gadol. Okay, that may be well and good in terms of an adult. Okay, why? Tichti Baho Basar. Because in there, in that case, we have the word flesh written there. Katan Nami Ketiv Be Basar. And for a small child, we also have the word flesh written there. Benoni minalan. How do we know then that someone in between, okay? What about that? Amar Abaye says Abaye, Aja mi bene. We bring it between the two of them, the two combinations. Migado. Lo acha, shekain anush kare. Okay, from regarding the idea of the adult, okay, can it bring it from the example of the adult by itself? <clears throat> because the adult who is obligated and does not do um, circumcision is subject to kare. The katan lo acha, and we can't bring it alone either from the example of the uh, infant, okay, why? 
Shekain mi labizmana. Because there, we know the circumcision has to be done at its fixed time, namely the eighth day. Hatsad hashaveh shebehen, the common factor between the two of them, shekein nimulin vedochin et hatsarad, that when one circumcises, one supersedes and put off the issue of tsarad, of the leprosy. Afkol shenimulin dochin et hatsarad, so therefore, in all cases that we circumcise, that supersedes the tzara'at. Rabba Amma, says Rabba, the following, Mila bismana doche lo tzricha kra. According to Rabba, to perform Mila in its appropriate time, okay, and to say that it supersedes, excuse me, does not need a pasuk. Mikal v'chomer acha. I can prove it simply from the kal v'chomer argument. Right? Uma Shabbat the chamira. Okay, and whereas Shabbat is more stringent, dochet tzara'at, okay, that that uh, supersedes the tzara'at, right? Lo kol shakein. Isn't that this the case? Amarle Rav Safra le Rabba. Says Rav Safra le Rabba, Mimai de Shabbat Chamira. On what basis do you say that Shabbat is more stringent, implying, than leprosy? Dilma Tzarat Chamira. Perhaps Tzarat is more stringent. Shechein Dochet Avoda, Because it supersedes the sacrificial service. And the sacrificial service supersedes Shabbat. Hatam lav mishum dechamira tzarat. There, argues Rav Safra, it's not because leprosy is more stringent, right? Ela mishum degavra hu delochazi, but because the person is not suitable, he's not fit. Am I? Why? Because the pasuk elsewhere tells us, the kotz baharto, the avon. Okay, namely, let him just cut off that section of tzarat and perform the sacrificial service. Mechusar tfila, but then he would be lacking immersion. Who? Tenach nigaim tmeim. That's understandable when we're talking about those aspects of leprosy that when render one tame, negaim tahorim, my ikalamema. Okay, but what about other kinds of uh, examples of negaim? Uh, All right, what are you going to say then? Ela amar rav hashi. Okay, so as rav hashi says the following. Hecha amrinan da'ate ase v'dache lo ta'ase. Where do we say <clears throat> that a positive command comes and supersedes a negative command? Kigon mila b'tzarat, as the example of circumcision in the place of leprosy. Onami, or perhaps also, <clears throat> tzitzit uklayim. The example of fringes and the issue of klayim, uh, okay? The of the ba'idna, the mit aker lav ka moki. Why? He says because in those cases, at the time, right, that at that moment that he is doing the uprooting of the love. Ka mokim ase, he is actually performing the positive command. Hacha ve'idne demit akher lelav, but here, in that ish moment at that time, okay, he's only uprooting the love. Lo ka mokim ase, and he is not actually performing the positive commandment. Okay. In other words, the cutting away of the Baharit 
is not a, a positive command, okay? It's really preparation to it, right? <laughs> okay, and therefore the fact that doing so, it implies that leprosy is not more stringent than uh, the avoda. Okay. So just to pick up and finish up, Vahad Rava Varav Safra. And this argument between Rava and Rav Safra, we'll just go over just a little bit. Tanaihi. That's a machloket tanaim. The Tanya. Why? Because there's a Braita that teaches Basar, the flesh, the Afal Pishayesham Beherit Nimo. That even though there is some let's call it by Herod leprosy on it, one does circumcise the very Rabbi Yoshia. That's the view of Rabbi Yoshia, right? The Rabbi Yonatan, I'm there, and Rabbi Yonatan says, hey, no tzarich, that it is not unnecessary. Why? Right? Shabbat, chamura doche, because where the Shabbat is more stringent, it would be superseding the leprosy. Sarat, lo called shaken, and sarat, okay, would it, it be therefore becomes all the more, uh, let's put it, I'll rephrase that. Since Shabbat is more stringent and it supersedes, okay, sarat then would be the fact that it would also, that uh, circumcision would supersede the Sarat as well, okay? So that it can be done on the eighth day, and therefore that's why we argue again that it is performed on that day. Okay? And we'll stop uh, right there. So we see basically there was a lot of argument on that issue. Okay. Thank All right. You, everybody, have a good day. Stay well and take care, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. Have a good day. Be well. Thank you. Have a good day. Take care. How are you today, Harvey? Not too bad. I will uh, just let you know I will not probably not be here tomorrow. Um, I gotta be somewhere at eight o'clock. So okay. Uh, so just carry on without me. We'll try. We'll try. Yeah, uh, but have a have a cup of coffee on me. <laughs> Notice I've, right in the middle. I, right in the I, middle. I had a, three calls from a contractor who's coming to finish the one window that's left. Oh, oh, that's where I was in and out. Unbelievable. Okay. All right. Be well. Be well. Hope all's well. Bye-bye. Take care.